What's up everybody, it's Joe back with another video and today I want to talk about my latest camera gear pickup, the EOS 1N. Uh, this guy was the flagship Canon camera from about 1994 to 2000 and was uh, only succeeded by one other model, the EOS 1V which was not discontinued that long ago. It was like 2018. This is pretty amazing technology for its time. We're talking 1994 here. It has five autofocus points, different metering modes, and a blazing three frames per second uh, continuous shooting speed, which doesn't sound like much when we have cameras that can rip like 20 frames per second these days. But back then, and for my purposes, three frames per second on a film camera is awesome. So if you know me or you've been around this channel at all, you might have seen my EOS R video, which I'll put a link to up here. And you might be thinking, why this camera? A film camera? So to answer that question, we're gonna have to back up just a little bit. Years ago, I found this camera, an AE-1 program, in my parents' basement, in a bag alongside an old Hi8 camcorder. And I asked my dad some questions. This was when I was just getting into photography and I found out that this was my grandfather's camera that he took uh, to Alaska and to Africa and on some other travels of his and uh, I immediately became interested in it and wanted to pick it up and try to use it and just in the last couple of years uh, I've gotten really into kind of documenting our life together with my wife and my daughter. They're my favorite subjects to photograph and this camera has just been a fun tool to capture our day-to-day -day life in a different way. For me personally, I'm trying to use film to grow as a photographer and learn the craft a little better and answer some questions I have about digital photography, like why does the portrait look so popular? Why does everybody talk about that look? Why is pushing film so popular? Why are there preset packs dedicated specifically for that? Uh, and the EOS 1N is kind of my way to have a comfortable to use, a familiar camera that shoots film that allows me to, uh, to explore those questions and find some answers. All right, so the EOS 1N specifically. Let's unbox this thing. All right, props for packaging. eBay seller, well done. This thing is heavy. Oh man, it's heavy. All right, so this is pretty cool already. The thing is clearly a tank. It's so heavy, like way heavier than my EOS R. It's in really good shape. Like it's so clean for being almost as old as me. And I'll tell you what, the thing I'm most excited about is that this grip right here is not sticky. So that's a major, major plus. No film in it yet. Let's see what happens. So I'm getting the BC message up here. I think that has to do with battery condition. So luckily I ordered a backup battery. There we go. I'm gonna load this film in because it's ISO 400, so it'd be pretty versatile. This is just something I've shot before and uh, it's not super expensive, so if something goes wrong in here with the first roll, I won't be out a roll of the good stuff, so to speak. Okay, so being totally honest, I did really mess up the first roll that I tried to thread into this thing. I put it through the sprocket holes instead of loading it a little bit further through. Thankfully, I was able to save the roll by using a razor blade to cut out the couple of frames that got stuck in the winder. I was able to get it back out of the sprocket holes and uh, use the rest of the roll. I'm really glad that I picked that cheaper film stock that I mentioned because I would have been very upset if I had cut one of my portrait rolls like that, but I was able to salvage it and make use of it and was able to develop it too. So this camera for me, like I said, is a way to uh, explore film a little bit deeper and it addresses two main issues I have 
with my AE1 program, which I love dearly. The two things that are really difficult for me to get used to are the lack of autofocus. Uh, I take pictures of my kid and she's a toddler, so she never sits still for more than two seconds. So uh, being able to have autofocus is a huge, huge bonus. And the second thing is a reliable light meter that I'm used to working with. Uh, this thing feels just like a 5D, just like a 6D, uh, just like the DSLRs I'm used to, so it's really nice to be able to uh, know exactly where the controls are and be just as fast with it as I am a digital camera. The other nice thing about this camera is it does work with all of my EF lenses as well, whereas the AE-1 obviously uses the FD lenses. That's another huge plus for me. So I've only been able to put through the one roll of film that I had to cut to get it to work, so I haven't had a really deep experience with this camera yet, but here are some of my favorite photos from my very first roll with the 1N. Thanks so much for hanging out while I talked about this camera. Super excited to shoot some more photos with it and share them with you here. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm thinking about making some more content related to this camera. Uh, thinking about maybe doing comparisons of film stock to digital presets that are out there. If that's something you're into, let me know in the comments below. If you got a similar film camera or a similar story with a film camera, drop a comment too. I'd love to hear from you and I try to reply to everybody. And speaking of, Thank you so much to all the new folks who have subscribed since the last couple of videos. It's really awesome to see my channel grow a little bit. So I really appreciate that and I will see you on the next one. Bye. All right, so one of my eagle-eyed viewers on the last video noticed my whiskey collection back here and noticed that the Ardbeg and Freug should be switched. So Timo, this is for you, buddy.